Welcome to Monday Morning Coffee with Inside the Firm. Each week, our hosts will be interviewing local, regional, and national business leaders to give you an inside peek into how they lead their business to success in the ever-competitive business climate. Welcome to another edition of Monday Morning Coffee uh, of Inside the Firm. We have a new guest, Paul Akers. He's the founder of Fast Caps, a product development company specializing in woodworking tools and hardware for the professional builder. Paul started Fast Caps in his garage in 1997 when he simply fixed what bugged him. He developed his first product, the Fast Cap Cover Cap, and from humble beginnings and no MBA, Fast Cap has grown to thousands of distributors worldwide in 40 countries. He's the author of many books, including Two Second Leans, and I'm happy to have him as a guest. Paul, welcome to Inside the Firm. Thanks, Alec. It's my pleasure. So we were talking earlier and you mentioned uh, humble beginnings and, and being grateful. And I really like that message. So could you tell our audience that? Yeah, I'm just a grateful person. I'm grateful that I was born in America. I'm grateful for what my parents did for me. I'm grateful that I've had an uh, opportunity that, you know, basically probably 6 billion of the people in the world will never experience just being born in this country. So I was able to uh, express myself. And in the process of doing that, I learned about lean manufacturing. And then what was already an amazing platform to start from, I then gained success so far beyond anything I ever dreamed of because lean was a supercharger to everything I was doing. And so I simply want to pay that forward. I simply want to help other people learn about the amazing benefits of lean thinking. And that's why all my, everything I do is free. I mean, my videos are free, my books are free, audio, 19 languages, it's all free. Yeah, and so I, I found your book, I think Amazon somehow recommended it and I decided to get it. I made a rule a couple of years ago. If I ever want a book, I'm, I'm just gonna buy it. I'm not gonna worry about price or anything like that. I, I'm so glad I did because now I bought the book for, for my firm um, and, and we're reading it. But some people maybe don't have that same philosophy as me. Paul, you put out for free an app called Lean Play where you read the book. Right. Um, not only do I think that's great just from you giving back, but there's also people that don't know and, and can start that, that book. And then if they want to buy it later, because I like to have a hard copy of my audiobooks too, they can. Um, so th this shouldn't be a barrier for anyone to at least start to look into. Um, and I, I think another thing people think is that it only has to deal with manufacturing and you've been doing this for a while. So what sort of companies, industries have this went into? Has it been absolutely everything? Yeah, there, there is absolutely no exception from in the smallest village in Africa, uh, to a little sewing shop with three employees on sewing machines and an open lean to to the largest construction companies in the world, Turner Construction, uh, the BI Group. Uh, I could just go on and on and on. I mean, Coca-Cola, Amazon's in our facility regularly, Chick-fil-A. I mean, you, I could just go, and the list never stops. From the smallest to most obscure to a, a small a legal firm in Australia, to uh, manufacturing plants in New Zealand, to uh, woodworking plants in, in uh, Vietnam and Cambodia, everywhere, all throughout China, it's everywhere. Yeah, what, one of the things that really like hit, hit me hard was in your book, I can't remember what chapter it was, but you talked about uh, hoax. I don't know if I'm saying that right, it's a Japanese. Hawks. It's okay, hawks. Hawks, they, they were basically losing $10 million a year, which is a pretty penny to lose. <laughs> And they, once they implemented this, and I don't know if it was over a year or two, they were now gaining $10 million a year. Um, that's, that's a huge, huge transition for a company just by changing their philosophy. Um, Fast Caps was always doing well, but then um, maybe you're the best person to tell the story. You know, yeah. employ, well, you know. There are, two, there are two kinds of places that, there are two kinds of individuals that adopt lean, Alex. One are the ones that are in a burning platform that need it because if they don't do something, they're going to die. And then there are those people who are incredibly curious and frustrated with the current state, curious and frustrated. And that's the other group of people. And that would be me. 
So we were making a ton of money. We were great, right? Everybody wanted to join our company. But I was frustrated, to be honest with you, because I came to work and I was dealing with these crappy problems, the same old problems with the same old people, and I was just tired of, of beating my head against the wall. Why am I the only one that gets it? And I, I, when they showed me lean and I realized what I was doing wrong, I wasn't spending time training and teaching and training my people on, in a regular kata routine, I mean a daily routine, and that I wasn't developing my people, my focus of my company was not the development of my people, then I realized, ah, that's what I'm doing wrong. So I just completely switched gears 180 degrees, and I spent all my time, spent all my money developing my people, and everything changed. But I'm a very rare group of people because this whole lean thing is only for about 2% of the people in the world. Most people have too big an ego. They never want, they think they're so smart. There's no way it's gonna work. They make up every excuse in the world, and it just doesn't work. So. I don't even try to get people who don't get this to get it. I, I laugh at them, actually. Right. I just laugh. Are you kidding? Yeah, go, go knock yourself out. I'm only interested in the people like you who look at it and go, oh, my gosh, this is it. Yeah. And especially for those people, too, that don't get it. it it's not like you're charging $4,000 for some course, you know, to come over. You can... Uh, you could buy the book. It's 12 bucks, right? Or you could get the app. It's Either way, it's, 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 it's no big deal. Um, so could you tell people who may, some people we, we forgot, maybe don't even know what lean is at all. <laughs> I have no idea. We're just saying words to them. So how would you explain it to them? Lean is simply the elimination of waste. That's it. No more. End of subject. So what that means translated in, an, in a very short sentence is Everything you do in life is a process from answering your emails to collecting your car keys to cleaning your car to taking a shower to brushing your teeth to how you clean your house, clean your toilet, how you disseminate information to your team, how you interact with your customers. All those are individual processes. And all Lean is saying, it's the simplest concept of the whole world. And this is why it was such a revelation to me because I didn't have to overthink it. All Lean is saying is, Look at every process you're doing, making your copy. What are the steps involved? And how, what are the, where's the waste? Where's the non-value added? So when I walk from my copy maker to my refrigerator and back with the cream, that's non-value added. Nothing's changing. Only at the moment the cream is entering into the copy and the copy is changing. That's the value added. So that takes about one second but I spend 10 seconds going traversing back and forth to the refrigerator. So think about that. 90% of, the, of that process is waste. And that is the key ingredient is 90% of every process you do honestly is waste. And I do every day. So lean thinkers are simply saying, where's the waste? Where's the non-value and the value and eliminate it. And it's a game. And we play it all day long with everything from answering our emails to, making our lunch, to cleaning our house, to stocking the firewood. I don't care what it is you're doing. It's a process. Find the waste and eliminate it continuously. This is the other key. It's a continuous process. It isn't like, oh, I fixed the fireplace, uh, how I load the fireplace wood now, and it's all done. No, 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 no. Every time you load the fireplace, every time you get the wood for the fireplace, you're looking at, was that, is there anything I could have improved on there? What was the awkward point? Where was the defects? Where were the problems that didn't work so well? And then you chip away at that for the rest of your life. That's yep. lean. I, I also think your fun process and, and thinking about a game is key. I, I learned that lesson probably the hard way, but you don't need to. It, it was in basic training, right? Basic training is hard. You know, it's like three weeks, you get four hours of sleep. You know, you're getting yelled at all the time doing all this stuff. And then suddenly I was thinking like, hey, what are my friends doing back at home? They were playing Halo. I'm sure they were playing Halo like it's nine o'clock at night. I was like, what? wait, I got a real gun. I'm running in the forest. This is a game. This is a game. Everything I do is a game. How do I get the drill sergeants not to yell at me? How do I do, you know? And it turned, and that's in... A little bit more extreme, but but every everything you do. One of the another cool video that I saw that you did was uh, the uh, Kaizen method. Kaizen, yeah, Kaizen. Kaizen method. It's called. I'll put a link to this. Learn fast cap style uh, with you. And yeah, it has a half a million views. Yes, and I think oh, it was Megan, like, you, me. and and someone else. Yeah, and Andre, 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 and, and you you were putting together couple different pieces and you had to get it under three minutes and and 
uh, Megan put it together and I think she was at 45 seconds or something like that. And it wasn't, she wasn't rushed. It's not about like putting the whip down and making people just do things. Oh, it was fun. It was totally fun. Yeah. And what was cool about that is it, you know, went from 45 to 33 to 25 to 22. And, and every time it went down, I was like, oh yeah, this is it. Like you stop here. Just, you know, you, you went from 45 to 30 to 25. You just great. And you kept finding ways. You kept finding ways. And I think the final was between 15 or 18 seconds. That's right. That's right. And it was. I, still it, that, we, and we still do that process and it's still being refined. Right. And, and think about that was one process in one product. Everyone from architects to contractors, there are a, a thousand processes. <laughs> and if each one of those can be refined down, the, the benefits, the ramifications, the fun at work, the not struggling, you know, struggling leads to frustration. Frustration leads to unhappy employees. Unhappy employees lead to an unhappy workplace, you know, and then that trickles up. Now your life, it doesn't matter how much money you have if your life is terrible um, and if you're dealing with problems all the time. Um, so th that's, what, that's what I really, really enjoyed uh, about, about that video. Um, yeah, eliminating waste. And normally in lean, there's eight waste. There's overproduction, transportation, excess inventory, defects, overprocess, wasted motion, wasted time, and unused employees potential. I think they can be adopted. I want you to think about something and your listeners to think about something. So in my life, I'm faced with problems every day and you're faced with problems. It's just inevitable. But the difference between my life and most people's lives is that I'm not facing the same problem I faced yesterday. I'm facing new problems because all my problems are being solved real time. When I, get, when I have a problem, I immediately stop and fix it. Immediately. I don't put off anything. So there's enormous amounts of flow and productivity and emotional energy in my efforts that I expend every day for 18 hours a day. As most people spend a good amount of their time chasing their tail. That's not what I do. And that's why there's so much joy. Yeah, putting out a fire is way worse once it's already into a blaze into a building than than putting out a little yeah. little spark essentially i don't put out fires it, right it, my my cfo before lean had a, got a hat like this and and it was a empty hat you know a white hat and he wrote on there firefighter yeah oh and and he wrote on there he said paul if you want to be a great CEO, CEO, uh, CEO, you have to take off that firefighter. And he handed it to me to make a point. Are you a firefighter or are you a lean thinker? And I got it at that point. I got it completely. There is no way, there's no way that I'm going to do that. And I, I didn't do it. I, I completely focused on solving problems. So I don't fight fires anymore. All I do is solve problems. I, I hate that term too. When I was about 10 years ago, a younger architect on my own, I'd get emails from contractors. We have a fire. We have a fire. And a lot of times it wasn't a fire. It was just, where's this piece of information? You know, where's this? It, it was never too big of a deal. Um, we get them a lot less now, but, but I hate it too because I'm like, a fire is a fire. Like, is the building actually on fire? You know, did something crazy happen? Um, but right. all these little fires add up. So I want to ask you there's in, in a lot of business talk, literature, you know, just general out in the zeitgeist, people talk about batching a lot. And, and that's what people think that they should be doing. They should be taking their emails, batching it. So they only do it in a time window. They should be taking calls only in this window. They should do meetings there. <clears throat> do you do any batching? Yes, or? absolutely. Absolutely. And, so let me, let me explain. The, the goal is not to, uh, the goal is not to say all batch work is bad. That's not what Toyota is saying, and that's not what I'm saying. What we are saying is to continually reduce the batch size, to keep making it smaller and smaller and smaller, right? So the, my, I'll give you a good example. You just said email. I used to do my emails once a day, right? And, and, and at the end of that day, when I saw that email, I just wanted to puke. I wanted to vomit. 400 emails. Much, right? Yeah. I, it was terrible. Now, 
I do my emails maybe twice a day, but I only have a few of them because I thought, why are all these people sending me freaking emails? It's stupid. It takes forever. I put everybody on, I'm, although I'm getting off of WhatsApp now because of the privacy issues and going over to Signal, but I put everyone on Voxer or WhatsApp. Now I'm switching to Signal and everybody sends me a voice message. They say, hey, Paul, you like you did, Al. Hey, this is Alex. I want to talk to you about this. I go, great, Alex. Boom. And it's done. And it's just in time. It's not like you're not waiting for information. And so then I took my whole email thing and I pared it down to a sliver of what it was. That's improving the process. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that is huge. I, the, I can't remember what book I read, but what they were talking about was reducing the batch size. You can still have it, but reducing it so that the one piece flow, the flow, Absolutely. the flow rate is the key. Reducing it. Yep. Yep. Um, I was talking to uh, Clyde. You introduced me to Clyde. Good, good, good. Yep. He, he's in our, well, he's a residential designer, but right. there's this thing between having the architecture term or not. He's basically an architect, uh, right. but he does designs uh, houses. Um, and, and one thing that he said, which was, gr which was great for people to know is that lean in increased his quality. A lot of people might think just it, if they don't read the books, they, they just think it's about reducing or, you know, eliminating or anything like that. But the quality then basically the word got out that he did great quality on time for, uh, you know, for a, a, a good price. And then what happened? He blew up, you know, he, he used to do one project a month. Now him and someone else, the other person working at their firm does a hundred quality projects a month. Um, yeah. So let me, let me uh, talk about that real quick because it's a really important point about quality. So what a lean thinker is doing, let's talk about email. Okay. You think based on what I've said so far, people would construe that what I did, what I was chasing was getting, reducing the time. That was not really what I was chasing. What I was reducing is improving the quality of my communication. I looked at the way my emails, I had to type all this stuff and spell check and everything. And then I said, if I send a voice message, I don't have to do any of that. And it's much more, there's much more deep depth in the, in the communication. So people can hear the inflection of my voice. So what I did was I improved the quality of the communication and by focusing on quality, it reduced the time because there wasn't the defects. Five emails instead of one audio communication. One audio communication was crystal clear what I was saying. It took five emails back and forth to a combination of 10 emails to get the right message across. So really what was happening was quality was pursued. And this is the essence of what Lean is. We are eliminating waste because the waste produces defects and reduces quality. Yep. I, I think that that's key. So that, that was great. I'm, I'm so glad you pointed that out. Uh, another thing that's semi different um, with lean, which what you're doing, which is the title of your book is that instead of these Kaizen moments, we used to have 5% Fridays. So the whole team once a quarter for at least half the day would get together, look at whatever we were doing and trying to prove it. Well, that was once a quarter on a Friday. Two second lean is about daily and, and, and constant improvement. So you had the same revelation. Oh, big time. I, had, that's, I remember when I first started to do three Sing or, you know, I said, oh, well, let's three S once a week. And that never worked because nobody ever took the time. But then I said, no, either I'm serious about this or not. We three S every day. We sweep, What's three sort, S? And Oops, sweep sort and standardize. That means the first thing we do, when we walk into our facility is no one works. Everyone cleans everything. If you've seen our videos, they have half a million views of our videos of our online tours, fast cap tour. Just type that into YouTube. You'll be blown away. It is the cleanest manufacturing facility in the world. It, everything looks perfect because before we do anything, 50 people clean the entire facility, get rid of all the clutter on their desk, so there's no crap anywhere. And then, then they create standards, they fix things, so things are look better and, are, and it can be utilized better. And then we work and that's it. So we meet and then actually after that, we have a morning meeting and we communicate all of our improvements and we develop our people and then we work. So the first hour 
of our day, there is zero work at our company. Nobody's working. Everybody's improving. Yep. One thing too, I, um, when I saw the video with Andre and Megan and, and yourself was a lot of people think, you know, manufacturing is transitioning to robotics and a lot of companies have that. But just think about if you didn't do what you did in that video, you'd have a robot wasting three minutes of time versus a robot doing it in 15 seconds. So those same people at your company it, it, or anyone's company can still be there improving the process. The, the revelation of how much waste must be out there, as you know, it might, is, is mind boggling. Even in these super efficient you know, companies, if you, don't have, if you just tell some robot to do something once this way, multiply that by 100,000 widgets, multiply that by two minutes of wasted time, you know, you're just, someone who's doing lean even with robots is still going to have the staff, but is going to crush the composition because they're thinking about every single step. Right. You got it. Ro robotics are not the answer. I mean, there's nothing wrong with deploying it when it's appropriate, particularly for health and safety things. But people are much more flexible than robots. And most importantly, people think they're constantly analyzing, if you train them correctly, what's happening in the process and how it can be improved. A robot's just a, it's not thinking. Yep. Yep. Um, so in your book, I, I thought there, you know, you had next steps and the first one is sweet, sort, standardize, two second improvements, focus on small things, focus on, like I put uh, color coded on my keys. So in the morning when I get here at 5 a.m., I'm in the dark, you know, I don't know which keys, which now, now I know what they are. Um, then a meeting, have a meeting, get everyone on the same page. Like you said, it's teaching the people rather than just basically forcing a process down there and then they can take over. And then I thought, I think this was like in the eighth chapter. And at first I was like, I don't like this idea, but I, I do think it's the key before and after videos. Oh, everything. How, how long did it take you to, well, to it, realize you know, that? What happened was we were having our morning meeting and we had 50 people, right? Or 40 people at the time. And everybody was making improvements. So when people would make an improvement, we'd walk 40 people over to a certain department and that was taking a lot of time. And I thought, well, let's just get a big screen TV and everybody just shoot a before and after video. And then we could stand in front of there as a team and everyone could watch what was going on in all the different departments. So to disseminate information, that's how the whole video thing came about. And I just started doing it. And then I just said, well, I'll share this with other people because it's pretty cool stuff. And that's when the whole thing just blew up. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Um, and, and not only for sharing, I, I think it's great if you ever went back and watched, you know, those before and afters, what we were doing, you'd be like, holy cow, I can't okay. believe how bad we used to be, you know? Okay. Yeah. Oh, we're, we're, I can't believe how bad we are today. Yeah. Bad today. I'm telling you, it, <laughs> the, 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 we've been doing this for almost 20 years. And we haven't even begun to scratch the surface. And we have literally made millions of improvements. I want you to think about what I just said. We haven't even scratched the surface. Yeah. So, Paul, what if someone's in some company listening to this? They're not in charge. They're working mid-level. Mm -hmm. their, their boss isn't implementing it. What advice do you have to them? Uh, focus on yourself. Forget about everybody else. Don't ever look at anybody else. If the minute you say... Look at all the waste those people have. You lost the game, period. There's only one person you need to look at, point at yourself. You have enough waste for 10 lifetimes. Not one, for 10 lifetimes. Shut up and start focusing on your problems and you will become a magnet for excellence. That's all I did. All I did was focus on my problems. And I posted the videos and everyone goes, oh my gosh, that's incredible. And everyone was magnetized to my effort on fixing me. I love it. I love it. Well, anything you want to share to wrap up, anything you want to point people to, um, where, yeah. where to look, I'll let you Really, just remember those words I said. Lean is only for 2% of the people in the world. And for most of your listeners right now, it's not for you. So don't even waste your time. But for the few people that are listening right now, those tiny few people, you're going to have the greatest life in the world when you get a hold of this. 
Isn't it crazy that I agree that only 2% of the people that listen to this will actually go down the rabbit hole? It's so small, it's unbelievable. And yeah. I just laugh about it. So to the, those 2%, man, rock and roll. To the rest of you, whatever. Sounds good. You can find Paul's stuff on Amazon. You can go to Lean Play, download that. If you can't find things about FastCap, you don't know how to use the internet, so just don't even worry about it. <laughs> it's everywhere, yeah. It's it all- is absolutely everywhere. Thank you, Paul. I enjoyed this conversation. I do believe for those of you, it will help out immensely. So I appreciate that. And I thank you for that. Okay. Thanks, Alex. Have a great day.